to the character corner. Chris and Palm. It has been a while, man. Actually, has it been that while? Because it was like, uh, been about a month, right? About a month. About a month, because that's when we did Luke Cage and Missy Knight. So, um, we are back. We said we're going to do this. Uh, it, it's perfectly timed because of this week of uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Really focus on them. I said we're going to do it. We are doing and talking about the Justice Society of America. The GSA. And we kind of covered some of them a little bit when we did the Black Adam stuff. Yeah, we talked about Black Adam stuff. We covered a lot of the JSA issues, but we're going to get a deeper dive today. Mm-hmm. Into basically the first superhero team. They're the originals. Like, this is... And it's so we'll talk about we'll talk about more about it in a second about the legacy and what they've meant to the to, to DC, but it's it's interesting to see because if you just read Marvel you don't have this. Mm-hmm. There's no singular group that kind of everyone everyone else in the universe looks up to. Right. The FF came around at the same time as the Avengers, same time as the X Men. It was the great Silver Age boom. Marvel's Golden Age is mostly monster stories, war stories, and horror comics. Their Silver Age started DC's an older company and were able to say, to kind of farm their Golden Age for ideas and bring back the JSA as numerous times as they have is one of the better ones they have, ideas they've ever had. Right. You know, it, it, it just, it, it, it makes sense. And... Uh, like I said, we'll go into their history, but uh, like I said, one of the issues we read, let me see if I can pull up that one. I love it. You know, again, Jeff Johns, I believe. Uh, yeah. It's like the beginning, and um, I think this is this might be volume three when they're tasking Ted Grant, uh, Alan Scott, and Jay Garrett to uh, basically reform the Justice League or bring in, new, uh, bring in new blood. And so you have Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. You got the Trinity, right? Which is supposed right. to be the highest of DC Comics. <laughs> the, the people you're like... So they've come to the GSA. We wouldn't be here if it, as it weren't for you. We owe you as much as the world does. And I hope you realize how important you are to its future. That's Superman. But Batman says, the Justice League is a strike force. The Justice Society is a family. Your team has connections to every masked man and woman on, the, on this planet. And one, one woman. And a, and a lot of them need to learn what you taught most of us. They need a moral compass. The world needs better good guys, so what can the, the league do to help? The league went to the Justice Society, to, to the big three of the Justice Society. Well, not the big three, but three of the members of the fundamental That's Justice Society. That's their big Society. three. Right. You know? And said, what can we do to help you? What do you need from us to help go out here and be the family and be the trainers of, of heroes? Which is basically what the Justice Society is. Right. They train They're- heroes. Like, mm-hmm. Justice League doesn't do that. They're already, you're already a hero. You're already, you know, you're you're in the field. You become a just member of the Justice League. You're you're in there. You know, you have the Teen Titans. You have all those, but the Justice Society, like you said, it's a family. There's as we go in this, you'll see legacy is so important and ties all these characters together almost. You know, and how they did it. It's it's it's. It's what makes them different. And I think while they're given respect in the story, I think sometimes we don't, as fans, give them the respect that they deserve. You know? A lot of times we see them. We're, oh, they're just the old guys or the old women. Nobody cares about them. Yeah, and people, and, and even in the era that you were discussing where they became the trainers, it's easy for the, the casual to say, oh, that's the other Green Lantern. That's the knockoff Green Lantern, like old Flash and like some guy. Like, oh, but... You talk about sheer power. Mm-hmm. The only people in the universe who stand with Toto JLA are the Justice Society. Right. Like you saw that. I, I don't know if you read Virtue and Vice. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. It's That's a fight. Right. <laughs> like when you see Superman and Green Lantern and Alan Scott next to each other in space, you're reminded that, oh, that's right. He was Superman first. Mm-hmm. And then you see, like, I don't know if you've ever read uh, the Hush issues of Batman he has a flashback with Tommy Elliott where they talk about going to Metropolis right, and, they and see, seeing Green Lantern right. fight Icicle. Yeah. These are inspirational figures to, to the people who are our inspirational figures. Mm-hmm. And it's through the machinations of comic bookery and, and being in limbo and other reasons that they're still around today. But I think that – and you're going to hear – when we say that about DC a lot, 
we're going to really, and you're going to hear the same creator a lot. And I want people to know we're not necessarily Jeff Johns fanboys. Like, I think there's a lot of things that Jeff's done that I don't agree with. But for someone who gets the core of a character and can show you in the span of a few pages why that character's special, mm -hmm. I don't think there's many people better at comics at that. Right. Because he came on, I think it was the middle of issue three, issue four of that 99 to 2006 JSA run. Mm -hmm. And you get immediately, he gets it. Right. I read Rebirth, Green Lantern Rebirth, a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, man, he gets it. To this day, I just, he, he has the, a, a very unique talent in that he can distill a character down. Like what we talk about, what they did so right with Marvel's Iron Man. Mm -hmm. They got a team of people that were able to distill what this character is down to like five phrases. Jeff Johns does that by himself. Mm -hmm. And then he says, okay, now that I've got these five phrases, how do I make them as special to everyone else as they are to me? Mm -hmm. And he really sells it because I'll be honest, partially due to how they were treated, I didn't treat the JSA as ser anything serious at that point either. Yeah, I loved Jake Garrett because I had my Flash comics, but even there he was kind of half retired Grandpa Flash. Right, get off my like lawn, Alan, get off my lawn, Alan Flash. Scott had changed his name four times. He had been Sentinel. He had gotten these long opera arm sleeves that I made fun of that I thought were hilarious. Like he became Starheart for a while. Like they tried to do everything in the world to make these characters relevant. They de they they gave Wildcat two kids and like aged him. Jeff John walked in and said, "What makes these?" character special isn't the things you can change about them it's the things that have never changed right they are the originals. that's why they're special they are the originals they are the they are the ones that you know that the justice league looks up to right that's, that's, that's what it matter. is yeah that's that's it you know they are legit heroes you know and they have things that, that they're always they're a family and um legacy matters so uh, All Star Comics number three was the first appearance of, and basically, you know, again, the first team of superheroes in, in the comics. Um, it was Doctor Fate, Kent Nelson, uh, Our Man, Rex Tyler, the Spectre, Jim Corrigan, uh, Sandman, Wesley Dodds, Adam, uh, Al Pratt, Flash, Jay Garrick, Green Lantern, Alan Scott, and Hawkman. The other interesting thing about this was it was um, also the first intercompany. Uh, su uh, inter intercompany superhero title because Adam Flash Green Lantern and um, who was it? Uh, it was somebody else Hawkman were published by another company. They were published by mm -hmm. All American Publications. Um, so that was that was the originals. And you know we look back at it, it goes oh well, okay whatever. But I mean that th that's a that's a pretty interesting and when we look at it now powerful team. December 1940. Mm -hmm. I can't tell. Like I know it feels like a long time ago. When did Barry Allen get a bit of the early 60s? I think so, yeah. 59, maybe? Oh, was it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's got to be in the 50s, right? But this is it. Like, this is it, guys. This is the beginning of modern superhero comics. After Batman, after Superman, they were retroactively considered founders as well. But what the list Chris just wrote out, that was it. That was the cast. That was the Justice Society of America. Mm -hmm. And from there, it. let's just talk about the publishing history before we get into the story history, because the story history is kind of complicated. They were published for a while. They, uh, the publication stopped. They were brought back after the Justice League had kind of been formed in comic books. And uh, we had the first appearances we talked about on numerous character corners, The Flash of Two Earths, when Barry Allen met Jay Garrick. Yeah, I think it was, what, 123? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Flash 123. Silver Age Flash meets Golden Age Flash. And then from there they were able to logically take it to a crisis on two Earths where the Justice Society and the Justice League for the first time ever interacted. And this was important because this was DC's first stab really at establishing two full Earths. Right. Because basically when the Silver Age saw you, you had the JSA, like you said, is on Earth 2, Justice League is on Earth 1. And because before then, like Golden Age, they kind of put them all together and it was kind of a jumbled mess. Even before then, I believe... 
the first female member of the JSA was Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. <laughs> but she was the secretary. <laughs> well, no, yeah, and Batman and Superman were members of the JSA, so on Earth Two they were retired members, right? So, so it was, it was, it's, it's always been fast and loose as far as the timeline, but what happened was they just kind of published these stories concurrently. So in Earth Two, Batman retired and became the commissioner. Of, Bruce Wayne became commissioner. Huntress was his daughter, and Catwoman was his wife. Mm-hmm. There was a uh, super kids. Like it, it was a generational thing. It was night. Uh, Robin didn't become Nightwing. He became Robin, and then the next Batman. He had a really kind of kick-ass grown-up Robin suit too. Actually, no more short pants. It was the first time Robin didn't have short pants. Um. But for a long time, they were, they were published alongside, so it was easy for the casual consumer to say, that's the other Justice League. It all changed in the 80s. Because DC decided they wanted to streamline their publication, decided, and you'll see this a lot happen in DC, they needed to change their history to make it fit better. So what happened was they pushed the JSA backwards in time and made their stories apocryphal, made their stories that our heroes would grow up listening to. And then Zero Hour changed that. Mm-hmm. Because as DCs want to do, they like to change things about their own past because, I don't know, they get antsy or something. They, I mean, I, I, I and, and we were talking about this last episode when we talked about the, the Legend of Tomorrow, right? And we were debating, we were not debating, we were just wondering, hey, maybe Thawne is the real villain in this. I think DC itself is the real villain. In the <laughs> universe, but they go back, like you said, they, they're going back in time like like Earbud Thawne and, and, and constantly fucking with time, like... There needs to be a time master somewhere telling DC, no, no, not anymore. Stop it. You're, you're fucking with your timeline. Leave it alone. Stop it. Stop it, Barry Allen. <laughs> stop it. Yeah, really. It's, it's Honestly, DC editorial feels. It feels that way a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So what happened was this event was called Zero Hour. It was 1994. Um, it was right after, I don't know if anyone remembers, they made Hal Jordan go crazy and kill the Guardians and all the Green Lantern Corps. He became the being known as Parallax, which was recently uh, and thankfully saved by Jeff Johns about 10 years later, which another theme you'll see here, a theory or a concept that was later rescued by Jeff Johns. Um, and it retroactively brought the JSA backish, Because while they were back and while they were, what's the best way to say, I guess, I guess present in our timeline, Extant trapped them in what they called limbo. Mm -hmm. Constantly fighting the same fight over and over again. We actually got to revisit it in Virtue and Vice. Right. And now that they were on the table to be used. This is still zero zero hour, right? Zero hour, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's basically DC trying to fix things. Yeah, it's trying to say, like, these characters matter and they need to be in our past, but we also would like to use them now. So how do we do it? And then they killed half of them. Yeah, they kill. So they kill oh. Adam L. Pratt. They kill Doctor Midnight, Charles McUniter, and and our man Rex Tyler. Uh, Doctor Fake Ken Nelson. He also dies of old age because basically what happens is accident is using uh, like time time. I can't remember time disc or something like that. And then it's something it ends up speeding up their time and and, and they get old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they merge Hawkman, uh, Hawkman and Hawk Girl with a Hawk. D- like yeah, they do some. It, it, there's some really crazy shit. <laughs> It goes <laughs> all right. Like I read it, and I'm like, because we needed to. But after I read it, I was like, all right, I need to go back and actually read about how. Like I need to read the synopsis of what actually happened here, because a lot of shit goes on here. <laughs> a whole lot, and it's it's a little. I think daunting is fair. Yeah. It's just a little much. <laughs> oh yeah. And it it continues that way through the '90s. Like the, the JSA, and everyone gets treated weird, poorly in the '90s generally. But the JSA just kind of gets batted around, man. They're kind of – they lose some of that weight, some of that gravitas. Mm-hmm. And they relaunched the JSA in 1999. But before they do that, they invigorate the character somewhat in 1996 with uh, Kingdom Come. I didn't put this on the list, but I just thought about this as they're talking about it. Right, right, right. I, started, I, I didn't go back and read through Kingdom Come, but I, I – we've, we've all read Kingdom right. Come a thousand times. Right. Um, it was painted by Fink Miller. Is that Logue? Who did Kingdom Come? Why is that bugging me? Hold on. Kingdom Come. 
I want to say it was Jeff Loeb, but I may be wrong here. Oh, it was Mark Wade. Mark Wade and Alex Ross. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of it's it's literally like the Twilight of the Gods. It's the end of superheroes. It's what happens when Superman retires and, and things go in disarray. And there's a lot of generational angst and generational tension there, and a lot of it kind of echoes what you can do with an older class of superheroes. So from 96, we get this story that's still a seminal story. I think it's still one of my favorites. You spin that forward in 1999, and a JSA series is launched. And I think, Chris, is this the first time you've read this stuff? Yeah, for a lot of – I mean – there were some of the later stuff. Could we end up doing Black Rain and Black Vengeance? Yeah. Like but the earlier stuff, no, I had never read it. So it's, it's cause, did this take place? This was when was fifty two. Oh, fifty two is a while from now. Yeah. So other than the, I, I think I, when when we did fifty two for, I think we did fifty two for what for some of the Black Adam stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think I might have gone back and read some of these issues. But for the I, I, just looking at the covers of some of them, I was like, wait, I think I've read this issue before. Um, but really, to go back and actually really read them, read them, yeah, it's been a, it, it was it, this is a, a lot of it's my first time. So, so we get like the, some of the inciting events. You get it really gets kicked started again on the idea of legacy. Yeah, I think that's when you know honestly, I think that's where. I think we're for everything we read. I think that's where they're always best. It's a hundred percent. It's where you. It's where you can truly feel the gravitas of the JSA. Mm -hmm. So when Android Hour Man arrives, mm -hmm. <laughs> who's literally like it's it's the end of history, but it's it's a physical embodiment of your legacy. Mm -hmm. The JSA lives that far from the future, and it kickstarts the reformation of the just justice just society. Excuse me. Yeah, because that's, yeah, that's 6 through 15 in the mm -hmm. first one. It was Darkness Falls, and you have the Excellent re Returns. Mm -hmm. That I mean, yeah, I mean, there's it's, there's a lot in there, but, and again, you might start off confused at first, but if you just kind of go through and kind of do a brief history on what what's going on, You'll you'll be able to pick it up pretty fast, and that and that's I found that it held your hand, like because I read when I first read this, like years ago, I hadn't read Zero Hour, right? And that, but I all, think, all you really know is the like, essence of time traveling guy who has plagued the JSA. And I think you can avoid. I, 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 I'm like I'm, I know I'm glad I read it, so you know basically you really only need to read Zero Hour so you know who died. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. Yeah, you you just need to read G Zero Hour to know that the, the they try to clean up Hawkman, and I think they kind of you know the, the, the hawk the hawks are always weird anyway, just regardless. So leave them <laughs> leave them off on the side. Uh, you need to know that they killed off some of the some of the um justice uh, the Justice Society, and that it merged the timelines. Mm -hmm. Like that's I mean that's the that's the that's the that's the most of it. If you get that. Then you're then you're fine, you know, and um, yeah, <laughs> that, that's really all you need. And I mean, no, that's not Jeff John just starts telling a master class on how to make something that hasn't mattered matter again. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go through some of the, the more notable arcs. And and I know people say that like, I don't know if people say actually, I don't know if people say this, it can feel sometimes that we do. These base a lot on the more recent comics, and that's true. They're easier for us to access, easier for us to read, to do research, but it also is they're more dense stories. Yeah, yeah. I it, it's one of those, it's one of the weird things I've noticed between DC and, and and Marvel is that I can kind of go back and read some of the older Marvel stuff, but like it's for the most part the newer. And I don't want to say when I say new, I'm talking about like. I was late nineties, ninety seven onward. Right, you can get even earlier than that sometimes, but right, but most times, yeah, it's around this <laughs> part. And, and, and it goes back to something we said, like I we mentioned before, like so what they did with Wonder Woman in, in this, like Wonder Woman joined the GSA was literally she was a secretary, <laughs> like so we we and this goes ties into our Wonder Woman character corner. We talk about how terribly they treated that that character sometimes. Right. You have what ends up being one of the. The pillars in the Trinity uh, of the just of of 
of, of DC superheroes, and they had her as a secretary. Um, and then later on, retcon that to end up having it be Queen Apolita being that one woman at a time. Right. And um, so it's like they've gone back and they've tried to fix these things. And that's why it gets so confusing that sometimes you got to do you got to you got to almost start at the, the end and then work your way back. <laughs> I mean, it sounds crazy, but sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'll read something. and I'm like, all right, I don't get this. Let me go and read that stuff. Like, I actually think some of this stuff was because I had read 52 for and we read we did 52. It wasn't just for Black Adam. It might have been for so was it Suicide Squad? It was something else that we read 52 for. But because I had done that, I was able to I was able to read some of these issues and go, okay, I understand. Like Adam Smasher, his his whole arc and stuff that goes on there. Like I'm not saying it didn't make sense to me when I read the other stuff, but I was like, oh, I know how this ends. Like this right. seeing him working backwards almost and working backwards through time, it was it was like going seeing him go from not being redeemed and and and, and being kind of a bad guy and then where he came from and and I'm like, oh man, this is actually. I don't know. It was more of an interesting read to me, kind of going backwards, if that makes sense. So, well, I see what you're saying, and also it helps. And I know you and I have championed this here in lots of places. It helps when you have consistent creators on a character. Yeah, you get that story told. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel disjointed. Like so, when you do read that Black Adam stuff, it feels like, oh, that makes perfect fucking sense. Mm-hmm. Like, Absolutely. like <laughs> he's been through it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not saying you should have done it, but I but I understand. Like it's a very, it's like when Chris left the Black Adam character corner, like with a the Black Adam is right T-shirt. Right. <laughs> like that's how you feel. Like like Adam Smasher. The episode, the 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 run starts with him having, with isn't it them trying to save his mom. Oh yeah, yo man, like, <laughs> she dies. Like <laughs> she dies. Adam Smasher's mom is on a plane, and I don't even think they were tr- – were they trying – Was it, were they, it wasn't even that they were trying to kill it. It just happened to be on this plane that goes down. Right. That's attacked by – I can't remember who it was. That Cobra. Co- Terrorist huh? group Cobra. Yeah, Cobra does it, and his mom goes to die, and she – yeah. And um, and then he goes back in time. Right. And replaces his mom with extant and saves his mother's life. Right, and they let him do that. They were like, oh, "We probably shouldn't do this, but all right, let's do this." And because, and, and I love how they did it. It was like, "Yo, they 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 they, they can't contain Exit," and they're like, "What are we gonna do? We can't really kill him. We can't really. What are we gonna like? Well, you know, you know, we're we're already traveling through time. We can save my mom." We're like, "Well, everybody else on that plane." It's like, "No, we're not save everybody. Just that one. Just my mom. Just, just my change mom. the seats. Change the seats. We know that that plane goes down. We know what seat she's in. Change it." And it seems like and, something such a small thing. And this is one of the reasons why I was excited to do the bulk of the John's run as our reading for this, because it's a lot of people's growth stories. Mm-hmm. He's just one of the people who gets a spotlight in the series. And I really want to commend Jeff Johns to be able to balance a team book and tell lots of individual stories in it. Oh yeah. There is a because lot of, yeah. He doesn't just, it doesn't end with him killing Extant. the fallout. Black Adam's the only person who's really made him who 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 everyone else tells him it was it was the right decision he had to do it. Black Adam's the only person who justifies the, the murder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't. He never says you had to. He says no, you did the right thing. Right. They because they built that brotherhood and then so now you've got Adam pushing Adam Smasher to questioning the moral rigidity of the JSA. Mm-hmm. It's. Watching them become friends and watching what happens and it's crazy. Yeah. And even when you go further in there, you see him kind of be redeemed when uh, we're jumping ahead, but when he, they had the, the issue with Perdegadon and they had to go to the, the past to convince their, uh, the original GSA members not to disband. And you're seeing mm-hmm. him have that, 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 cause at this point he's, he had already joined up with black Adam and he, they, the, the the JSA members that are that were able to be pulled in the time stream that are, that are there they know they see him as a traitor they don't trust him and um but they have to they have to use him because he's the only one that can talk to Al Pratt right like it is like you said it is an incredible arc they do with these characters and it goes back to what 
the foundation of all the Justice Society is it's family, it's legacy. Right. You know, no matter it's generational. what. Generational. It's truly a generational story. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um. Where are some other biggies? So we did. Uh, there's one another generational story. Uh, we have what, what was it? Was it Stealing Thunder with the arc for uh, Johnny Thunder? Johnny Thunder, yeah. Johnny JJ. And Dick, yeah. You know, that was another one. That's kind of it, it. It was actually it gets kind of emotional sometimes. Actually, it gets really emotional. You know, at one point, what was the villain that that took over? Uh, the lightning. Yeah. Oh, let's see. It was um. He had a weird fucking name. Uh, he he jumped through body and again it, it tied into the whole that tied a little bit and I, I like I said I think you can avoid zero hour if you just know kind of what happened there, right? Uh, because it was it was there like you know Johnny Johnny was getting old and there was a new kid Jakeem who had the uh, <laughs> well Jay gave him the pen Jay Gare gave him the pen mm-hmm. they, they, they didn't know the, they, they didn't know they had the the genie they didn't know the, yeah they didn't know the genie was in there. Uh, and his magic word is. I love that they have people that have magic words. It's, it's so comic book. So it's like and that's another thing too about. The, I think that might be one of the things that, that throws people off with the GSA is some of their powers and some of their things they do and some of the way they look. It's so over the top and how you say comic booky, and so you don't take them seriously, even though they are. I mean, his magic word is so cool to bring the the genie out, but. Literally, at one point, when this villain gets a hold of it, and he and is able to do this, this villain literally takes over the entire world and creates his own fucking universe. <laughs> and so you realize you're like, hold up, guys! Like, is this some of these you guys have a kid having? Like, <laughs> yeah, we should keep an eye on him. We'll keep, yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep an eye on him. It's fine, <laughs> right? You know, it's just nobody had the most power, but you do, and you guys give it to a kid, but you trust him. And, I, and, I, yeah. and that was the great thing about that storyline. It was 32 to 37 is, so, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, did you find the name of the villain? Ah, oh, God damn it. Let me see. Uh, it's one of the genies, right? It, yeah. It's not one of the genies. It was um, the, 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 the villain that, that, that it's nothing but a brain. Oh, Ultra Humanite. Yeah, Ultra Humanite. There we go. And um, he was able to trick. He, was, he had used Johnny Thunder's body to kind of trick. So it came to giving him the pen back. So then, mm-hmm. then and then what happens is the next, the literally next issue, I'm like, oh, what happened there? Next issue, they kind of just time jump. And you're like, wait, what the fuck's going on? Why is, what? this doesn't, what's, what's, and then you realize Ultra Humanite has basically created an alternate universe where, you know, he's in charge and basically they're, they, they trapped all the, the telepaths and the telepaths are like, it's, it's a, it's a, Terrible world. He has um, Ted and was it Our Man or was it Doctor Midnight? I think it's Our Man. It was Our Man. Oh, let me see. Let me see. And he basically has he they they didn't they, they he couldn't control them. So basically, what he does is he brings them in every he brings in Ted Ted Grant every time and then fights him and then beats his ass, gets his ass beat and then drags him back to try to break him. Like it's it is it is a just it is it's tough it's rough. Um, but Jakeem and, and a couple others. Uh, they, they, they're they trying to fight back. And I want to say it was like, it's been like a few weeks, like six weeks or something like that. Or, I don't know. Wow. But by the end of the story, you basically get, you know, this young kid having to kind of grow up and you realize why he's on the Justice Society. Like it's, right. th- there's a level of trust that the JSA has versus say, you know, like the Teen Titans or anything like that. You know, it's like, if you're a member of the JSA, you're on the JSA, they believe in you and they're going to have you live up to your name because you're not just living up for yourself and being a hero and for everybody else, but you have a, a legacy and a name to hold up to. Right. You know, you're not going to be the new hour man and run around and, and not live up to, you know, what Rex, Rex did. You know, it's just, they're not going to allow that to happen. So you need to get in, get in line and, and, and learn. And, and stand up and, and do what you're here for because if we asked you onto this team, you deserve it. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was a really, that was a really, um, it, it was, it was kind of heartbreaking at the end too when they, when they find out how they're going to deal with it and that, uh, 
Johnny Johnny has to basically die. Yeah. And then he becomes uh, he his soul merges with the the uh, the, the, the genies and becomes Johnny Thunderbolt. Right, Johnny Thunderbolt, and it's it's it's, it's a really good. And it sounds crazy, but it's a really good story. And it's it's so nice to read these stories because each one of them, like you say, it sounds a little crazy, but they're not just. And, and it's so it's such a weird thing that to say is a good thing, but because they gave these writers and this team such a long time on it, each arc feels complete and understood, but it still builds to something. Mm-hmm. And the growth of these characters happens. So, like Black Adam is welcomed to the Justice Society into the scenes with him and Captain Marvel. Where Marvel's like, I need to overcome the bullshit between us, mm-hmm. but it's hard for me. Mm-hmm. Like watching the other heroes struggle with having this man who they know as a villain mm-hmm. on their team, it's hard for them. It's, I don't know. It's 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 a whole series, especially this this run is about carrying on the heroic leg- legacy of those who came before. Right. And it couldn't be better. I don't even know what to say. Like. I talk about this book sometimes because I never – it's one of those books that you read when it was out. But you're like, nah, man, I wish I could – I should go back and read this sometime. I'm really glad we took the time to do that here because it reminds me just how good that book is. Right. Um, the the one that I thought really stood out to me in, in at least in these these 84 – the 81 issues, um, I think, like you said, John does 4 through 81. Uh, I think it was 68 through 72. That's the one where they the – so, um, Perdigadon has gone back and has found a way to basically make sure the Justice Society of America never exists. Mm. And the way he's going to do that is he goes in and he's, again, remember the way the JSA kind of started was, hey, they, wartime is, is World War Two, And you right. remember that time is, you know... There's a bunch of stuff, and I think so. This is after I think it's after World War II. It just ended, but that's also during the time of the Red Scare, and you know how you know how America was back then, right? Right. And so what they've done, what they did was they had it, and they wanted the they wanted the JSA to unmask and, and prove their loyalty, and they're and the JSA is like, no, refuses to do it, and so they disband, and by doing that, it's able to. Um, you know, give predicament a way of doing whatever the fuck he wants. Right. Um, but in order to do that, he's, he's, uh, I think it is, is it, it was, um, it was Rip Hunter and the linear men are, are going out there trying to stop this and they're trying to grab as many GSA members as they could before the time ripple comes and wipes them and erases them all. So they can go back and, and stop this. And so what you have is you start off with this, with them going and Star Girl's there. She's young. She's the um, uh, uh, she's happy about being a, a hero and, and 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 being the Justice Society. And she uh, she she goes downstairs for breakfast with her family. She has her her, her infant sister there. Her, her, her stepbrother, her stepfather, who was um, oh, who was he? He was he used to be um, Pat Diggin, Stripesy. Right, he used to be Stripesy. Yeah, her mom. Her mom was asking her about pancakes. Her her stepbrothers were making fun of her for for sleeping in her costume. Then all of a sudden, uh, what did they call them? The um, oh, what is the what is, what is his what are Predecadon's um, uh, uh, henchmen? I can't remember what they were called. They show up and they slaughter her fucking family. And when I say they slaughter the family, I mean <laughs> everyone. Yes, everyone. Even her infant sister. Yeah. Like it is. I'm like I'm reading this going, huh? That took a turn. It really does. <laughs> and, um, like it. Took, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Did, did I just see? The, did I just see them shoot a infant? Did they, did they really just do this? You may have seen that. So, um, she's pulled in. By uh, Rip, and he basically tells him what happens. Like, listen, you gotta go back in, and you gotta convince. Oh, who was she convincing? What was the name of the original Starman? Oh, I can't remember his name. But she has to go back and do that. Ted so, Knight, huh? Ted Knight. Yeah, she has to go back to him. Uh, there's um, uh, um, uh, uh, our man to go back to to uh, tell his father. Some of the like, this is the, some of them are are literally family. 
Some of them aren't. I and I think that that that's what makes this so um, interesting when you have uh, uh, the different dynamics here. Right. You know. You know. Rick has to go back to 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 Rex, uh, I, and I'm like, yo, like your 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 family, like. <laughs> How are we gonna like? And, and remember, at this point, I believe uh, Rex is dead. And I think I want to say, is this the point? No, yeah, this is the one where he and we'll get into the powers later on. But this is the one where he has he he still has his father available for an hour. He can go into the time stream and talk to his dad. He has an hour of time to right. talk to him. So it's like and it's, it, like it's it's deep, right? You have that. Um, uh, 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 Holt has to go back to um, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Terry Sloan. Terry Sloan. He has to go back there. I mean, it's, it, uh, 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 Rostin, um Adam Smasher has to go back to Al Pratt. It's I like, thought it was really interesting that that's who they had talked to him. Because if you know, like Damage, was Damage still on the team at that point? I don't think so. I don't, I don't okay, think Damage was there yet. Because Damage is like a biological son of Al Pratt, but never knew him. Right. Right. I, I think, you know what I think, <coughs> excuse me, even if they did, I don't think, I don't think Damon was, was, was a part of the team at that point. I think that's the next volume or the volume after that. Cause this is, this is still technically volume one, I guess. So I guess that would be the next volume. But to me, I think the reason why they did it is because you literally see Al Pratt being convinced by government agents that he is to go in there and knock the door down and bring out Hawk man and Hawk girl. And he's, he's, he's been, he's like, you got to do it or we're going to, we're going to take your, your wife or your, your fiance and her family and we're going to lock them all up. We're going to save their enemies of the state and do all this stuff. And you're watching this and you're seeing them have this, this, this mental, like this, this moral dilemma. <clears throat> and he says, no, he's not going to do it. And I think the reason why you have, uh, Adam Smasher be the one to talk to him because it's like Adam Smasher needed to see that because Adam Smasher is the entire time is having this conversation in his head yeah. <clears throat> about how no, you're right. he's, he, he's, he, he's, he didn't do that. He, he didn't listen and he went down a dark path and he followed black Adam and doing all this stuff. So no, I, I, I like I said, it's an amazing story. I even love the fact that they get, um, it's not Curtis. It, the, it's what Michael Holt. Like what was the name? What's the main, uh, the name of the current Mr. Terrific. Depom, you there? Did I lose Depom? Terry Holt. Terry Holt. No, oh, no, no. I'm sorry. It was Michael Holt. Though. Oh, it's Michael Holt. The current so, it's Michael. Yeah, yeah. Michael Holt is the one that went back. Um, they had. So, here's the oh, thing about Michael. Now. It's here's Michael Holt. Thing, yeah. Here's the thing about Michael though. He's black. And uh, they have to go back in 1942, or ni- in the 1950s. <clears throat> so he's trying to talk to Terry. He's fi- he's following him down, and he's trying to get on the train. And the, the conductor's like, hey, boy, what are you doing? White's only train. Can't get on there. <laughs> I thought that was funny as hell. I was like, yeah, that's going to make it a little bit difficult. <laughs> and also because of the way his, 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 um, his, his stuff is up, there is no sort of technology and stuff like that. So we had to kind of do things a little bit more the hard way. But right. you, get to see, you get to see some of the original Justice Society uh, members and what they were doing, what they were dealing with. You had um, Terry had to go down and was trying to find his brother. Ends up finding out that he has a niece uh, that's being um, was being raised by a uh, roulette at the time. So it, it, there's just a lot going on there. But I've really enjoyed seeing them have to go back and come to terms with their legacies and 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 try to convince these people. Hey, you know who I am. He had. Uh, you know, uh, the two Doctor Midnight's talking, things like that. But that was the that was the easiest one. <laughs> Charles Midnighter being convinced was the easiest one to convince. He was like, "Oh no, I believe you." Okay, cool. <laughs> I just want to talk. I, I sick and tired of talking to everybody else. I gotta have a real conversation with you. I I enjoyed this. <coughs> what do you need me to do? <laughs> so, uh, you get Rick and Rick and um, Rex trying to take on protect it on by themselves and not winning, but um. Yeah, there's a lot that goes on there, and uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, they save the day. But it's it's a it's a really good 
story there in those like well, I guess it's four or five issues. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, before we go forward, oh, excuse me. Hold on one second. You good? Um, before we go further into some of the other storylines we had here, you want to go through some of the um some of the other some of these members and some of their powers because they, I, I what I what I we, we kind of mentioned it before, but I I find that they're the different members and their different powers and what they can do is such a wide range, you know? Right. And it can be like some of them have no real powers. Some of them are just really good at fighting. Some of them have actual power. Some of them are magical. Some of them have uh, technology. I mean, it's there's a lot going on there. So, um, <clears throat> let's start with um, let's start with the founding members. Flash. We have spoken about it before, before at length. Jake Garrick um, tapped into the Speed Force, boost for speed. Yep. Alan Scott, powering uh, Green Lantern in name only. Apparently, at one point, the Guardians collected all the rogue magic in the universe and threw it away, and they threw it, of course, to Earth. It hit, I think it was a train? And it, I think the, 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 it's called the Star Heart. It's a repository for all wild magical energy. Um, it said it would flash three times once to create life, once to create death, and once to grant power. It, I think it brought someone back to life. It killed someone. And Alan Scott found it and made itself into a ring. He became Green Lantern based out of Gotham through all the pre-war years and through the JSA. He's gone through lots of permutations. He's an honorary member of the Corps at this point. But his power registers differently than the Green Lantern's would. It's the same type of power. He's vulnerable to wood, which is the dumbest weakness in comics. Oh, uh, yeah. I... <laughs> it's still the dumbest weakness in comics. Like, I remember reading it was that, that I think it was um... – uh, the 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 was it uh the virtue one with, with JSA and JLA Vir, virtue and vice. We'll talk about that next. My, dude, like I remember at one point where I think it was Terry uh or Michael where he um he says yeah, but you're still vulnerable to wood. I'm like wait what what what? Yeah, it's uh it's not the uh not the coolest weakness. Um, Wildcat Ted Grant, former boxing champion of the world. Um, help train a lot of the heroes that we like to watch today. Black Canary, Batman, Catwoman, all trained by Ted Grant. Mm -hmm. And he has literally nine lives. Yeah, that's how they were. Which we found out during JSA. Right. (laughs) Um, Do you want to do with people who aren't on the team anymore? Well, we still go through, uh, yeah, yeah. Legacies? All right, um, Hawkman's Hawkman. I'm not telling a Hawkman origin story. You can't. I don't have 20 minutes. No, that's a totally different thing. Just He's yeah. a man with wings who can fly and fight really good. There you go. Um, Wesley Dodd, Sandman. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Sandman. Um, yeah. Uh, Wesley Dodds was, I guess, like a mystery man. He had a, what do you call it, a sand gun to put people to sleep when he was. <clears throat> and he died during, what did he die? I don't know. Hold on, let me see if the issue in front of me has a list at least where all these people died. JSA Secret Files 1. So he died during the limbo disaster and his legacy is sandman or sand uh sanderson hawkins which again is one of those really super on the nose comic book real names uh if i meet someone named sanderson i assume you have powers sorry (laughs) um and sand isn't a normal person like like uh, sandman was no he's actually a silicon based life form right because it was was a sidekick that they they had done you learn about this in the um in, in in that little those those, those issues of what, the sixty seven through seventy two yep. where they go back in time, you find out you're like, oh, that's Sandy. Is th- yeah. he was back then and he got uh, they were they were doing experiments. He was he used to be the he used to be the sidekick. Mm-hmm. They were doing they were doing experiments, and this it went horribly wrong. Yeah, and uh, again like. It was a really emotional thing where you're like, yeah, I, 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 he asked me before. I told him it wasn't his fault and that I didn't feel anything and stuff like that. So I have to lie again. I'm like, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, But with Sandy, he can literally, like, he can literally control, like, the earth. Yeah. He gets... And that's something you'll learn, too, is that a lot of these legacy characters get quite the power upgrade. Yeah. When they, uh... (laughs) You think? When they take their spots. Yeah. Like, he Um, literally becomes, like, 
you yeah. troll the herbs and shit. Right. Swimming, swimming through. Uh, th- like I remember the one issue where he was like, "Yeah, I'm swimming through the the earth." And it never gets old. Like I'm swimming through it like water. I'm like, uh, "Yeah, dude, you yeah, that's not what Sandman could do." Yeah, that wasn't what. That's not how we got here. Also, um, he gets the, the same dream Sandman used to get. Mm-hmm. Prophetic dreams. So that's also one of the reasons this ties in the Kingdom Come really well. The the main character, the first proponents of things that were going to come poorly was that he visited an old man named Wesley Dodds in the middle hospital who said he saw visions of a war coming mm-hmm. and turned to be the entire events of Kingdom Come. Uh, let's do some other just society um, originators, originators. The Spectre, Jim Corrigan, he is the earthbound form of God's vengeance. Mm-hmm. He's as lovely as he sounds. Um, later comic creators took that to mean exactly what it sounds like and not as cutesy as it was played in the 40s. Um, how Jordan at one point will serve as a specter, which yep. comes into play. Uh, Dr. Fate, Kent Nelson. Ugh, the fates are complex. Like, they're like the Hawks. Yeah. The helmet, there's a guy who lives in the helmet, and he makes you magically powerful. That's about it. Yeah, it's like you have magical powers. What does that mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay. Rex Tyler's a drug addict. I'm sorry. Um, our man... <laughs> Created a pill called Miraculo that gave him, which you'll remember mentioned in, if you listen to watch the, uh, the Arrow, mm-hmm. you'll remember it from, uh, I believe, season two. Yep, season two. Uh, it, and it was more than an hour then, but the type in the comics it guarantee you an hour of super speed, super strength, basically the physical um, peak of humanity. He is a founding member. He died during Crisis in Time, but was brought to life by... <laughs> His legacy, the Iron Man Android from the 853rd century, mm-hmm. where they switched places. And now our man was able to, to serve on the to society alongside his son. Um, Rick Tyler, Rick, who Rick really Tyler, is a drug addict. Who who really is a drug addict. <laughs> yeah, like you can sit there and say, well, maybe Rex, he's not a he's not a drug addict. He's a professional. He's a pill popping superhero. Right. <laughs> Rick, on the other hand. He really is a... He has a problem. He really has a fucking problem, yeah. Yeah. Um, and along with Rick, Tyler, who had the same type of powers as his father, there's Matthew Tyler, who's the android. Mm-hmm. If it sounds complicated, that's only because it is. Yeah. Uh, um, don't, don't, don't forget the one time when... <clears throat> was it during Black Rain? Or was it during, it was during one of those, those issues where they're fighting um, Black Adam and, and, and Rick gets injured... And so he switches places with his father in the yeah. um in the in the time point. Yeah. So uh The Iron Man stuff is weird, I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, it, it is weird. It's it's weird, but I, I find it not it's weird but not confusing, if that makes sense. Right. That's hundred percent true. It I can you can actually follow it and it makes sense. Like I, I didn't so that was one of the ones where if you read it backwards, you do get confused. But if you read it and going going back and like, I remember when we did the Black Adam stuff, and I was I I did just didn't understand the Iron Man shit. <laughs> now I've read everything. Now I'm like I totally get it now. Basically, I, I believe it was, and during um, uh, during Crisis, uh, the android Matthew Tyler gave uh, uh, uh he gave Rick to not not during our uh, it wasn't during our Crisis, but he gave Rick to to um. Two uh, uh, two gifts, and one of them was he in in time point was his father that for an hour. Um, that could be stopped and started at any time. He could get, uh, he could spend time with his dad, and so right. you literally have him with this, this time on, on his on his right arm that is ticking down from sixty minutes. You know, um, and it 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 makes sense, and it every now and then pops up, but it really comes ahead where. When Rick gets hurt and he sends his father back instead of himself. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Al Pratt, the Atom, uh, he had the power mm-hmm. to, I think it was, he had an atomic punch. Um, but it's, he inspired Ray Palmer Adam. Mm-hmm. He inspired Adam Smasher. Mm-hmm. He was the father of damage. Like, he is kind of. He's almost, and I, I always, and I always hesitate saying this because I really do think that Alan, Al Scott is Alan Scott is their Superman. Yeah, but if the Superman B, it's Al Pratt. Mm-hmm. 
Um, we talked about Johnny Thunder and the Thunderbolts. Yes. Dr. Midnight was original. Um, his uh, successor, Dr. Midnight, who I think spelled it differently. Mm-hmm. Um, is Peter Cross. Neither one had any. I think Peter, didn't Peter eventually get superpowers? Uh, I think. Okay. Well, they're both actual doctors, which is important to know. Right. Yeah. And, uh. Yeah, it's, it's he can see across darkness after an accident. That's what is he can see in pitch darkness. Um, otherwise, he's blind, which is ridiculous. He's basically, um, basically he's um, he's the doctor version of uh, Daredevil. There's that. Hold on. I'm not. No, I'm not saying that Daredevil. I'm just saying, but like for people to just to, you know, Doctor Daredevil. Midnight, Peter Cross is useless in daylight. Useless. <laughs> That's why he's always wearing fucking sunglasses. That's why he's always wearing those goggles. It's the single dumbest superpower. What's your what's your superpower? I have perfect vision at night. What during the day? Blind as a bat. What? <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm sorry. It's a stupid fucking power. Oh man. Um, one that's of the why, that's why he has Dr. an owl. Peter yeah. Cross is that not only is he like the go-to doctor for the DC universe, he also dated Black Canary, which means every scene with he and, and Ollie in it is the greatest scene in comic books. <laughs> yes, no, we'll talk, th- yeah, it is. Yeah. We'll talk about that during virtue advice, but it's really enjoyable for me. Yeah, no, yeah, it's... because I'm a child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Starman, Ted Knight, his own legacy. Starman is it's a cool superhero, man. If you don't know about Starman or those books, like the 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 Starman mm-hmm. book with his son, whose name is escaping me right now, Jack Knight, is a great book. Mm-hmm. It's one of the only times. You'll see a superhero literally just say, I don't want to do this anymore and retire. Um, I don't, have you ever read Starman, the book? No, I have not. Okay, so <laughs> it's... They gave... I want to make sure... I want to get all the credits right here because I'm going to pull up the thing here. It was He was created by James Robinson in Zero Hour. It was a modern Starman. It ran for, I think, 60, 81 issues, including specials and annuals. And it's, just, it's the reason why eventually uh, uh, Courtney gets the staff. Mm-hmm. Because Jack's just Jack is, he's Starman for a long time, but he passes the, the rod on. James Robinson's unique deal with DC Comics says that he can never, they can't use Starman characters without his permission. <laughs> he created Starman, like that's one of the very rare com- places in comics where the creator has full creative control over the character. He walked away from the life. He retires and takes his son and moves to San Francisco. And because of the rights are so complicated with him, he's never used again. I love his series. It's 81 <laughs> issues of, of James Robinson just telling the story. Like you said, whenever you get, whenever you get a creator that much time to tell his own story, it's great. You're going to tell something good. So just want as talented as James Robinson. Um, we talked about Wonder Woman and Hippolyta and how they kind of made that fit eventually. Terry Sloan, Mr. Terrific, inspired Michael Holt, the truest Mr. Terrific, one of the three smartest men on the planet, right. who has the T-spheres and the mask. Um, well, the, original, like, the original yeah. uh, Mr. Terrific suit is ridiculous. Yeah, it, he had I, powers. I love, I love when he shows up in that one, like when Terry Sloan shows up in the one issue and Roulette makes fun of him. It's like, are you blind? <laughs> like, were you, were you colorblind? Like, that doesn't make... That suit is terrible. <laughs> She's not wrong. No. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> no. But he, he gave us our kick ass, Mr. Terrific, which I salute. I appreciate yes. um, Those are some of the powers in the original JSA and that have carried through now. Again, um, during JSA, we're rereading Black Canary joins. Um, she joined. So, strangely, I guess her mother on Earth 2 was a member. But because they merge timelines, there's never Black Canary. I don't know. It's very complicated. Yeah, because she starts, eventually joins. They end, up, they end up having to, just like they do with the Hulk. Sometimes they 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 merge characters because she wasn't she wasn't the the Black Canary we know. But yeah. right, yeah. So this is all pre Infinite Crisis JSA. This is ninety nine through 06. Great run. It touches and like we said, it's a book about legacy. That's you through time travel touches the origin origins and the end. It's a great. What, 80 issues? Mm hmm. 80, 80 issues 80. of just greatness. And it's Jeff Johns. Like, again, like Chris just said, you give a creator enough time to tell a story, he's going to tell you a good one. He told you a great one. If you ever thought you'd see Black Adam actually in the JSA and then Captain Marvel have to join just to keep an eye on him, <laughs> you get it. 
Um, so let's talk about Virtue and Vice. Yes. So Virtue and Vice is a one shot that was published by DC Comics that kind of explains explores the relationship between the JSA and the JLA. What happens is it's proposed that the two teams meet up every Thanksgiving and have Thanksgiving dinner together. Mm-hmm. It should be a nice, quiet time, full of reflection. Of course, they're superheroes, so it's not. Um, there's an attack at the UN. But let's start at the very beginning because I really enjoy just watching some of the counterparts interact. Oh, yeah. No. Great. Like watching Alan and Clark talk about, like, kind of the power. Mm-hmm. Because they're the ones with the maturity. Because because while GL, while Kyle at this point has that kind of power, he doesn't have the experience. But you open up with Clark and Alan outside the space station, outside the watchtower, watching Earth. Mm-hmm. And it's so, it's, I don't know, for me, it's a really powerful thing. I'm like, wow, you never really think about it like that. About how they would see this. And then you get everything else. You get a, a full-on JSA story with Johnny Sorrow, but you also get a Justice League story with Despero. I really enjoyed Virtue and Vice. I like I like everything about it. I could read that every, once a year, easily. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it shows you the respect that the two teams have for each other and how important the Justice Society is to the JL. You know? it just It just is. Like at one point, I think Stargirl goes up. And, uh, yeah, I was about to read that. Panel. Yeah, go go and read it. Uh, so Stargirl teleports up to the Watchtower, and uh, Wally runs up on her. She says, "Wally, you moron! I almost fried that stupid grin off your face. Now nah, I would have dodged it. What's got you so nervous, Star? You mean besides walking around the JLA Watchtower? I mean, it's the Justice League. Does it get any bigger than this?" Wally says, "That's funny." She says, "Why?" That's what Greenland and I were saying about the JSA. <laughs> like it's it's so funny because. That's literally how they see the JSA. They, they're so, they're awestruck. Mm-hmm. And like you've got the Adam like swapping stories with Captain Marvel and like Batman and Mr. Terrific going over the uh, security needs of their team. Right. I love I love that because it's like he's like Terrific shows up. He's like, wait, you're not gonna eat? He's like, yeah, we'll socialize later. But you know, I just want to go over security stuff. Like it's just like it's such a Batman and Mr. Terrific moment, yo. <laughs> it's so good. It's those two characters to a T. Mm-hmm. And then you get um, John starting to, to scramble the teams for his disturbance uh, on the Earth. And he and Alan are already all over it. Mm-hmm. And I love that he beats Alan out of space. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn it. Right. <laughs> damn kids. <laughs> and they go down and they break up Bedlam, who's, who's taking over the UN or whatever. And that's a very quick one-off fight. And then you get everything else. Mm-hmm. So the main crux of the story is that Johnny Sorrow... Through, the, through his machinations, has been has freed Despero and allowed him to take hold in Luther, President Luther's body at this point, and also freed the seven deadly sins from uh, the Rock of Eternity and loosed them within members of the Justice League and Justice Society. And it gets you get like obviously the plays on the origin plays on these guys' actual personalities, mm-hmm. but they're turns that make sense, right? Like Green Lantern being struck with envy. <laughs> like aside yeah, oh, yeah. from being super on the nose about green mm-hmm. it's interesting because you're like wait a second he is the last of a legacy you could kind of see that mm-hmm. you get um dr fate laziness sloth and i'm like that also <laughs> makes sense because really you're like if dr fate didn't have sloth he could just 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 end it all he's got the power Yo, it, oh, it was God. so funny because at one point, like, they're literally in the middle of a fight. He's, like, laying there yawning in the air. <laughs> like, it is hilarious. You get uh, Mr. Terrific Pride. His name is Mr. Terrific. I can count on the nose. Classic Man Greed. Batman Anger. Uh, Captain Marvel Gluttony, which led to a lot of funny scenes of him stealing the lightning back. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> Power Girl's Lust, which, again, when you say on the nose. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's really, I just thought it was really good. I thought it was a really, it's a really fun little take. It's really fun to watch uh, Black Canary, Green Arrow, and Dr. Midnight try to work together. Mm-hmm. And Canary and, and, and Arrow not beat up Midnight the entire time. <laughs> um, a dick. It's, he, he ends up sending half of the team to Limbo where the JSA was stuck for so long. And then they get out because they brought Ray Palmer with them. Mm-hmm. And he sciences their way out of there. And it's so good because 
as important and powerful as these two teams are and they're shown to be, it's way more interesting to see them working together. Because, like you said, the JL, JSA was stuck here for years, trapped fighting the same fight, and Adam's like, mm, no, that's not going to work. We're leaving. Mm-hmm. And he finds a way out. You also get a picture of Despero wearing a American flag as a coat, as a cape. Yes. Which I think is amazing. And the fact that they put that in the comic book is amazing. I just, I, I really, it's a lot of fan service. It's a lot of fun. You got these guys just, yeah, it's a JLA versus JSA fight on some level. But on a whole other level, it's just really fun to see all these. Like, at one point, our man says, Despero's going to break my arm. Yes. Uh, so what, oh, yeah. When that happens, I need the two of you to cause a distraction, a big one. Right. <laughs> it's so good. Like, it's such a good, like, he's telling the flashes that. And then you, like, you almost halfway forget about it, but it's about 20 pages later. Mm-hmm. You get him breaking uh, Iron Man's arm, and then you see both the flashes say, really sucks sitting on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. Now we can go. Right. You don't even notice that the entire fight scene before that, they aren't fighting. Well, and I, and I love that. What what our man says it was like yo it's like but you was like but your arm got broken it's like yeah nothing time won't heal and I'm just like all right that's pretty good it's pretty good yeah I <laughs> you gotta yeah it's, just, it's a really good it's a really good like one quick book but it captures their relationship it captures like they end up end up having the meal at the very end mm-hmm. and. I like the scene at the very end where it's it's one woman in, in Stargirl. Yeah. If it doesn't mean a thing, if we don't have faith in ourselves too, I saw Superman and Sentinel fly up there, which by the way, I reminds me they're using that shitty name at that time. Um, why do they do that? Perspective, Courtney, perspective. And it's the two big guns sitting in space watching over the earth. Right. And it's just so indicative of how people of Earth of that earth would view the Justice League and Justice Society. Mm-hmm. And I really I don't know. That's always it's one of my favorite books they've ever done, just because you get to see them be one community. Yeah. And how important that one community is. Exactly. And how, again, they're not the, they're not the, uh, the B team. They are the A team, you know? Um, yeah, no, it it, it was, it was really great to see that. Um, let's see. I think there's the volume three. Okay, so right now is when Infinite Crisis happens. Right. And everything is turned on its ass. The 52 happens, or not not the 52, like, the series, but the 52, like, the right. uh, the weekly series happens. Mm-hmm. And then we get the one year later DCU. Mm-hmm. And let's talk about Volume 3, because, like, it goes back to the scene you already discussed, where the big three of the Justice League are literally begging the J- J- JSA to reform. Right. And so... What you have is you have the JSA during these issues going back and trying to put another put together a new team, um, and a team that's again, it's not just random people, teams that are legacies. Mm-hmm. They're walking around with either the names or, or family of it. Um, my favorite one is when you find out that Ted Grant actually has a kid. <laughs> right, and it's it's so good because they set it up. With him not, because it's, it's the three of them. When 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 Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman are talking, it's it's Alan Scott, it's Jay Garrett, and it's Ted Grant. And it, it Alan and um, Alan and and uh, 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 what's his name um, and Jay are all trying to be this. And I can't remember what the two words that summed them both up to that Ted said, but it's just not Ted. Ted does not. He's like it's like responsibility and pay or something like that. And it's just not what Ted is. He's like, listen. You guys go get the kids. You find out who they are. I'll put them in. The, you put them in the ring with me. We'll see if they can stay. You know that's 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 his test. That's how you can find out. He's like, test. he's like, you guys do. You guys do what you got to do. You go find anything. You don't need my opinion on who these people are. You got to think about this way too much. When 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 it's time to put them in the ring, come and find me, right? And so you can just tell. He even says it's like I'm not a you know I'm not a father figure for these these kids. That's not what I am. That's not what I'm, I'm here for. And so then you find out that he actually has a kid. And they don't tell him this. <laughs> they take him to the door and it's kind of like, yeah, we got to do something else. So uh, you guys have fun. You guys work this thing out. We'll come back later. All right. <laughs> Go ahead and bond. And it is like the most awkward thing in the world. It's a problem that Ted can't punch. Right. <laughs> and it's just not working. Not at all. And then Vanessa um, shows up. <laughs> but one of my favorite parts of 
the when they after Infinite Crisis was the Lightning Saga. Yes. The crossover with Justice League of America. Um, and the Legion of Superheroes. Oh, uh, well, yeah, we'll get there. Okay, we'll get there. Fine. It's, it's, yeah, we'll get there. It starts off with them literally doing training games. <laughs> it's Roy and, uh, it's, it's Red Arrow, Geoforce, and Wildcat playing Capture the Flag and Hot Girl and Red Tornado. It's, which by the way, the next one is my favorite one. I always wanted to try it. It's where you play chess against two people at once. <laughs> It, I couldn't do it blindfolded, obviously, Mr. Drake. Right. But it's so funny because it's so impressive until I think it's later on in this very issue they explain it like he's not, you're not, he's not playing both of you, you're playing each other, you idiots. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Either he wins them both or it's a draw. Or no, it's either he wins one and loses one or it's a draw. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and having somebody explain that in the comic, I was like, well, now I've got to do that. Because it's so funny because he's playing Black Canary Green Lantern and <laughs> blindfolded and Batman walking through the room. He's not playing both of you at once. He took white on one board, black on the other, and then he plays against each other. <laughs> I can will always be a win and a loss or two draws. Elegant Michael, nice test. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it because then, cause Black Canary, then, cause black canary uh, got checkmate. She was like, but I won. He's <laughs> still kind of lost. <laughs> And then Hal goes, who taught you that trick? And he doesn't even let Michael Holt respond. Batman, he stole it from the amazing Kreska. He used to play two grandmasters like that. (laughs) Oh, man. It's so good. Oh, it's brilliant. I don't even get it. It's been so... Just little stuff like that. Like that little thing of Batman calling out his bullshit... Mm-hmm. Stop it. Stop mm-hmm. it, Michael. Stop screwing with them. You're doing it again. <laughs> Don't screw with the children. <laughs> That's what it was. And then by the end of the issue, you get to figure out that it's uh, a crossover with Legion as well. Mm-hmm. To bring back Wally West. Oh, uh, but you don't know that at the time. No, you don't. But you think it's Barry Allen. No, and I love that. So at one and point. And guess what? It wasn't to bring back Wally West. We can talk about that in a second. Yeah, yeah. But I love that. that far. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, because that's, yeah. That's uh, how the Legion of Three Worlds happens. Mm-hmm. But uh, I love that uh, Batman mm-hmm. thinks it's Barry. Because at one point, they're all, the Justice League and, and G- GSA are trying to stop it. Because they believe that when the Legion is going to bring this back, that one of them has to die in order to do it. Which is what's happened in the past. Which, again, was a great way for them to, like, mine their history for a story. Mm-hmm. That's how they brought back Lightning Lad in the past. Right. And so you start thinking it's Lightning Lad, and then as as Batman, we join Batman in thinking they're bringing back Barry Allen. Right, because it's like you see the different locations that they've gone to, and it's all locations, and it's all Barry Allen. And but I so- also love that, that, that they the, – sorry, this is one of my favorite scenes in all comic books. I know you're right, and like Dream Girl is talking to Jay and talking about, you know – Unless my unless my job, of course, is to stall the one person who's actually fast and stop from happening, mm-hmm. and then you get a scene of Jay looking at her, and then like he smiles at her. We fought Hitler, sweetheart. Be serious for a moment. You think I'm the fastest member on these teams? <laughs> and you see like four more panels of really fast leakers just showing up. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, that's brilliant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, 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 it's it's great. Um, but like you're with ba- you're you're thinking it because Batman doesn't go in to stop. And it's because Batman thinks he's figured out that they're trying to bring back Barry. Same so, with GL. Mm-hmm. Hal thinks it too. Yeah. And so then when it's not, I mean, everybody's kind of happy, but at the same time, Batman was like, it wasn't who I thought it was. And then here's, and the great thing about it is they never mentioned Barry. No, you just get the, the, you the overlays. You just get the overlay, and you know what he saw. You, you know it. You know. I know this place. I, yeah, man. They're not here to bring back lightning, but what they're chasing is something far bigger. And you think you're convinced that, yo, he's there bringing back Barry. Mm-hmm. And it's so smart and so well written that you don't actually see who they bring back. Right. Because you see at the very end, because in the book, when you're reading it the first time, I remember I was reading this monthly, and I was mad that I hadn't seen Wally since Crisis. Mm-hmm. And then he shows up. But I was like, this is great, this is great. But if you keep reading, you see that that's not who they You hear Brainiac say, what's well, I want to read it here. Uh, if I can get to it. Yeah, here it is. 
It's truly inspiring. He's a speech, Drake Burroughs. But for this universe, all I really care about is that we got who we wanted. And there's a face in Lightning Wand. Mm -hmm. And the story becomes the return of Wally West, which, by the way, another le two, le three legacies bringing back a legacy character. <laughs> like, what are we doing? This is the whole book is, and that's what I really enjoyed the volume three that we're about to talk about. Of J, of J, of became just Society of America, excuse me, didn't become JSA anymore. Because active on that team, you didn't just have historic JL, JS, JSAers. You had legacies like Obsidian and Jesse Quick. Mm -hmm. You had Legionnaires like Starman. Mm -hmm. You had Justice Society members from a different Earth in their own kal -El. Right. It's great. Like, And then you get like a I don't know if this is their intention, but the fact that they did like a bastardized version of Kingdom Come was really interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah, let me see the, the full in 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 volume three, the full list is Obsidian, Jesse Quick, Damage, Starman, Cyclone, Wildcat, Citizen Steel, which uh, I think that happens. Yeah, you get Nate Haywood getting because the fourth right comes in. Is that right? <laughs> oh yeah, the fourth right comes in and decimates the the, the Haywood family reunion. That's right. all they do. Like again, this other thing too is this 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 volume starts with um um what's it uh, Mr. America? Yeah, yeah, Mr. America, his family getting decimated and then him dying like. It is a bunch of people die. <laughs> yeah. He die and he crashes through the, the skylight onto the Justice Society of America's table. Like it is uh, yeah. Uh Judo Master, Amazing Man, Lightning, uh Lance, uh, Mr Mr. America then I think um that is the his former partner. The over the other Mr. America, his former partner comes in. And you get that scene of him. Let me see if I can read that. Cause I thought that was a good one too. Uh during this run, you also get the spinoff series, JSA All-Stars. Yes. Uh, which follows, like, the new generation. So now you get one book that's just about teaching and one book that's about, like, the generation thinks they're past being taught but still not ready to be JSA members. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a really – it felt almost like the Future Foundation spinoff book. Like, less a spinoff, more a companion book that Hickman did with Fantastic Four. So, um, yeah, so is at the end is when um, Ted is talking to uh, his son – um, and it's, uh, and so Saver thought we all, uh, Vandal Saver thought by cutting down our family trees, there would be no more justice society. Saver thought we'd all just die out, but the justice society ain't just about family. Look at Michael Holton, Sandy, uh, Sandy, uh, Hawkins, Courtney Whitmore and Jakeen Williams. It's not just about the blood that's passed down. It's about the symbols. Someone else will pick up the mask. And the name. And that's where you have Jeffrey Graves kind of finding out, uh, finding the box that has the Mr. America uh, costume in it to be the new Mr. America. So, I mean, it's just, yeah, man, it, it's just, whew. it's all about family. It's all about legacy and passing the stuff along and go through it. And I'll be honest, you know what? Um, we've read a lot of DC stuff and... Next to the Flash, I think the, this Justice Society, the Justice Society stuff, might have been some of my favorite. And it is for me too. And let me tell you why. It's because you don't just get a sense of these are fun heroes. You get a sense of depth and resonance because it matters through history. Mm -hmm. Because the Flash tied so much into what Barry and Jay had done, to what Max was doing, to what Bart might do. Mm -hmm. Everything seems to have more poignancy. And because you know that they may take the cow off of him, but Bruce Wayne will always be Batman. Yep. It kind of betrays some of the urgency in the book, but I don't know who the next Flash is going to be. They, they've seen it with lots of characters. The stuff that, that uh, uh, Jesse Quick, Liberty Bell goes through in this series. Oh, yeah. Whew. Like, it, it, it's everything matters more because it feels like it's not existing in just Gotham in this moment. It feels like it's existing globally through the through the century through the century through a century because you've got founders on this team and you've got legacies of their of, of their friends mm -hmm. 
And I think that that's really kind of the appeal and kind of the strength and kind of the heft that it gives these these stories. I also really enjoyed reading uh, the Lightning Saga when because they were able to weave in lots of character beats from different char- from different books where Michael Holt doesn't know why Red Tornado can see him. Oh God. <laughs> And Batman's like, just leave it alone. Just, just leave it alone. <laughs> well, I can do some tests. He's like, hey, how about you just shut the fuck up? <laughs> he almost killed us like two issues ago. How about mm-hmm. you shut up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no. it's. Um... I really enjoyed it. I, you know, this is the first, this is only the second time because I read it when it came out, but I was like, I'm not touching that again. The volume three JSA stuff. So I'm really glad we took the time to read that this, this week too because it, I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed like them seeing like, Earth 2 pre-crisis, like in Kingdom Come stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you get to see a Michael Holt who was a priest. Mm-hmm. And like, because Michael Holt is, by being the third smartest man on the planet, he's an atheist in our world. Mm-hmm. And like a, a lot, like he's made many, it's, it's brought up enough to where you can't really un- not know that about a character. There was... And to see them go to an Earth 2 pre-crisis and where Michael Holt was a priest is interesting to me. And I just I like alternate worlds, I like alternate universes. I like them bringing Keenan Cole Superman for a while. I just really enjoyed that that third volume more than I remember enjoying it. Mm-hmm. No, I, I thought it was really great. Uh, I thought it, I thought it was uh, like I said. I, I've I've really having gone back and read this stuff now. I, I really enjoyed this GSA stuff. Like I wasn't I was kind of iffy, didn't know how I was going to feel about it. But um, so far we've done a lot of unknowingly we did a lot of GSA stuff before this too, and um. Yeah, it works, man. It just works. It's nice. I mean, it, um, in other media, these characters can be seen lots of places. Uh, Mister Terrific becomes a pretty prominent character in Justice League Unlimited season two and three. Um, you see lots of the JSA characters in the background. There's a lot of legacy characters that are sprinkled throughout. Um, all of DC are Justice League Unlimited. Uh, as we talked about live action, they're appearing all in the Arrowverse right now. Um, you'll remember also that. The in Smallville, the JSA is used as well. Um, I think that's mainly the alternate, the uh, other media stuff for them. They're, they're sprinkled throughout. They're they're mentioned often in video games and film. Um, if you've ever seen the Justice League Crisis of Two Earths, some of those counterparts can be seen uh, as uh, images, like they're 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 Earth three components, like. There's a Mr. Horrific I remember seeing. Um, and I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't really farm this this generation of characters often for other for outside media, and that's fine. And I understand that. I just think that it's something that could be explored. There's like a fictionalized version of them being used that got used in Justice League, the original series, where they uh uh I think it was called Legends. Where there's a green guardsman who's like green of uh, the streak, black siren, catman, and Tom Turbine who's like at the atom. Um, so it's it's when Green Lantern, I think he meets them in like an alternate reality. Uh, black Canary obviously is a prominent member in Justice League Limited. Doctor Fate's there. Adam Smash is the focus of some episodes. Star Girl is the focus of some episodes. Sands in the background. Doctor Midnight's in the background a lot. Wildcat is the focus of an episode. Obsidian Hour Man are also in the background. Um, Let's see, Brave and the Bold, they appear on. I never really watched Brave and the Bold, but none of them there. Young Justice, which I'm not sure if you ever finished. Um, no comment. Fair enough. Uh, uh, Jay Garrick appears more than once, and there's a couple flashbacks that include a lot of the rest of the JSA. Live action, like I said, Season 9 of Smallville, recent uh, Arrowverse appearances. Um, they did a film version of Justice League New Frontier. Uh, where the Justice Society has retired, but they're mentioned. Mm-hmm. And I think that's it. And I can't believe yeah. someone finished it. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. There's a lot of stuff going on, man. I'm just saying. On. I know, I know. I'm, I'm part of the problem. I know. <laughs> but yeah, um, there you guys have it. That is the Justice Society of America. Um, I highly recommend these books. Like I said, we'll have all the books in the show notes. You read them, find them there. Um like I, said, I have some other stuff that I've read that's not too bad either, and I'll throw them in there. There's one I can't remember what it, 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 was it the All Stars book or something like that. The one where it's it's interesting because you get um, each of the some of the, these these legacy characters, and there's a, a story with their their original there, and then it comes together at the end with what's going on there. So um, I thought that was pretty interesting. 
Um, we'll talk fifty two, the Black Rain, and some of the like the Black Adam stuff that we that we didn't cover here, but it's definitely GSA related. I'll make sure I'll put those back in the show notes and read all that stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah. Go listen to the Black Adam character corner because we talk about a lot of this stuff there too yeah. in greater depth. Yeah, I'll make sure I'll make sure I'll, I'll, I'll include that in there. And we still get a we still got a, I think we did at least an hour and a half on this one, so that's still pretty yeah. good. So take this and the Black Adam stuff, you will be well covered in um, just the Society of America. If we get Black Adam stuff on Legends tomorrow, I'm gonna flip out. How about that? We can't. They, I don't think they. We can't. Be, I think they can't. But guess what? It's time travel. It ties to the past. I don't know. We got Reverse Flash. We got Nazi Reverse Flash. All of a sudden, who says we can't have? Oh, we'll see, man. I'll be greedy for this. Hey, no, 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 no shame in that. Um, the next character corner, we're gonna we'll probably be soon in the next couple of weeks. I'll talk to you about it. But we got to do Doctor Strange. That'll oh, we're next... gonna be Teen Titans. No, we're gonna do we're gonna do Teen Titans, but Doctor Strange comes out in a couple of weeks anyway. So oh, you're right. We do so we got to do Doctor Strange first. So we're gonna right. jump over to Doctor Strange real quick. That'll be a nice little short one because it's a single character. And then we'll figure out our team. That, that also gives us some time to figure out the strategy for Teen Titans because, um, yeah, that's going to be at least two episodes. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, man. All right, folks. Thank you guys very much for listening. Again, you can find this on the Character Corner. Search for iTunes, Stitcher Radio for and that. Uh, and YouTube now. You can get the Character Corner on there. Um, also, you can hear Deepom on the Unanimous Decision. It's also now got its own feed on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and everywhere. And also on YouTube. So check that out. And, uh, again, leave us a five-star review on this show and we will read it on air next time so again thank you guys very much for listening until next time we are out of here peace